Of course, Lee also had a great right-hand man, who of course is known as Stonewall Jackson, but his real name was Thomas Jonathan Jackson. And Jackson, kind of like Lee, had a somewhat of a troubled background in the family. He was orphaned early on, but he was raised by relatives and was actually raised by quite a few good men who really made him into an honorable man. He was a West Point graduate, had served faithfully and with great distinction in the Mexican War. Uh, he was known for being a rather slow-minded individual, which meant that when you gave him a new idea, a new concept, a mathematical idea, for example, he was very slow to understand it, but he was very stubborn and steady. He would work at it consistently until he figured out how it worked and really could explain it in the most basic manner that pretty much anyone could understand. So it made him a brilliant student, but it also make him a brilliant teacher later in life. Now, it was during the Mexican War, for example, that he met a man by the name of Colonel Frank Taylor. And Frank Taylor was someone who really mentored Jackson, who really discipled him, who really taught him the importance of prayer and the importance of knowing your scriptures. And so it was during the Mexican War, for example, that Jackson really became a very committed Christian. After the war, he uh, returned to Virginia to teach at the newly founded Virginia Military Institute. And he was known as being a very methodical teacher, someone who if you did not understand the lesson and he, he knew that you didn't understand it, which was most of the time, he would repeat the lesson the following day, word for word, the same as the previous. He was a man of great routine, someone who was known for his pacing in his study, someone who spent a lot of time memorizing things. Now, Jackson, in his personal life, uh, his first wife actually died. It was quite tragic and uh, really wrecked uh, the, the mind and the spirit in many ways of Jackson. So he traveled over to Europe, and it was there in Europe that he saw the great cathedrals of faith. He also saw the great battlefields of history. Actually, he went to places like Waterloo and was able to kind of pace around the battlefield, contemplating the movements of the French or the Prussians or the English at that great conflict. When he returned, he remarried, and uh, it was with this wife, uh, who he dearly loved, that they actually had a daughter. In fact, his wife would later write down a memoir for her husband, who died in the war, uh, of all the things that she knew about him. And this memoir really showed that Jackson was a man of constant prayer. In fact, Jackson said this, I am afraid that our people are looking to the wrong source for help. And ascribing our successes, which the Confederacy had many early successes, to those to whom they are not due. If we fail to trust in God and to give Him all the glory, our cause is ruined. He was a man who was known for being home. He was a man who was known for his family as well as his gardens even. He was a man who really loved that whole idea of home, that whole idea of domesticity. He was also a man who really looked for opportunities to reach out. In fact, he was famous for having a Sunday school for the local Africans, both those who were free and those who were slaves. He taught them the scriptures. He taught them the catechism. He even helped them learn how to read. He was always known for being patient, for being steady, and for being fierce. He was someone who really believed that because this was an attack on the home, he would give no mercy to the enemy. In fact, he was famous for saying, give them the black flag, which means take no prisoners. In fact, let me read to you uh, what one historian has evaluated about Jackson. Jackson affirmed this war was, in its intent and inception, different from all civilized wars. It really wasn't a civil war at all. And therefore should not be brought under their rules. It was not like them a strife for a point of honor, a diplomatic quarrel, a commercial advantage, a boundary, or a province, but it was an attempt on the part of the North against the very existence of the Southern states. And so Jackson was always someone who very aggressively argued for independence and for the freedom of the states that had been granted by the Constitution. So really, the whole idea of slavery, although it was on Jackson's mind, in fact, Jackson was someone who was against slavery, it was never seen as the cause of fight for him. I don't really think you can explain a man like Jackson with all of his honor by being a man who simply fought for the right of slavery. It doesn't actually do justice to him at all, nor does it do justice to the many slaves who actually fought for the Confederacy. And so we really come back to the whole idea that this really was a fight over the whole idea of authority and justice in the first place.